regarding their acceptance on their vehicle road? Uh, Chief, I, I, you don't have to come up, but uh, I didn't see the petition yet. It's probably in my to read file. Uh, are you aware of this uh, Church Lane and Crystal Drive that the, the acceptance speed that you make? We need to get the. Uh, oh, we just got to say, maybe we get that sign up. Uh, find out. Okay, I'll put it Church up there. Lane and? Church Lane and Crystal. Is that that? Yeah, that's actually well, it's oh, right. about yeah. Yeah. Right. We can get the sign up. I, I think it's before the. Uh, we haven't heard about this before, right? Uh -huh. No. no right. Just came into that. Yeah. New for today. Right. Okay. Um, and Sharon, I, <clears throat> I see the building department monthly report for February 72,000. That sounds a little high. Can we check that number? I can't imagine. It took in $72,000 a piece. Yes, we did. Wow. We'll keep it up. We want that every month. Bill, <laughs> <laughs> no, you hear that? 72,000. That's what uh, will be a little 72,000 in the building department. Could you give Andrew and check what we budgeted for last year for all of the building department fees? Because that's <coughs> the record uh, for this. Probably for the construction of the new building. For this time, for this economy and this time of the year, that's pretty remarkable. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. Well, they, they were, that was, that was going to say that there were, uh, there were some large ticket items, shall we say, that are included on it. They're, you know, going to be one time it's income. 25% of the original permit loss. All right. Well, uh, reporters, here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Saturday, March 10th. Forever grateful, honoring our, our vets, uh, Polish Hall, uh, 5 to 10, so only $27.50 for you to and honor these veterans. I owe something uh, 75 cents about the land. Only paid 27. But anyway, uh, let's see if we can have a great turnout for these veterans. They're, they're fighting for us, our country, our county, our state. And we should be very grateful for these guys coming home uh, after they, they did their, uh, their duties over in Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, and the other Mideast uh, places over there. And all our veterans protected us right through uh, World War I, right through uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. All these vets uh, should be on it. Us. This is why we have a great country here. So, make sure checks out the Polish Hall 2750, and you can uh, come and honor some of these veterans. Okay? Thank you. Uh, any other reports, Jody? I know you had uh, an interesting Friday. We did. We have formed the Alternative Transportation Committee, as I'm sure some of you might have read in Newsday. And we received grant money from Cornell, Cornell Cooperative to install bicycle racks in all of our public parks and beaches. So on Friday, we went out with the engineering department and looked at the photography and where we're going to put these bike racks. And we expect the bike racks to be in next week. So we'll be putting up signs saying, share the road. And please um, be careful when you see bicyclists on the road. And I know that Jim has been working with Geo and widening some of the shoulders to provide for bicycle, seeing as the cost of fuel keeps rising. And uh, bicycles are a fantastic alternative. Don't you think Jim's? He's the closest counselor. He can ride his bike to work, don't you think? So. Maybe. Pass a motion. That's why it's in the one block. Pass a motion. That's why it's in the one block. I think we yeah. pass a motion that Jim has to ride his bike to work. Okay. I'll pick you up on the way. We'll get a bicycle bill for two. Oh, I don't worry. Let's I just want to point something out now today. It's the good news to the community garden. They got the eco light pole is being installed as we speak. They're just finishing up. And that was a donation from Chevawa, and this uh, eco pole means it's being driven by wind and solar. And we like that whole park. It was a donation. Right? I thought you said eco. The community garden just got eco light. <laughs> And actually, no yeah. E. coli. You can't yeah. say that we talk about a car. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Gaines was out there helping them install them today. Where? Yeah, so I actually was there. I'm sorry, Mr. President. All right. There's no President. Thank you. 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 Thank
was a war pit. Yeah, there are too many reports. No? No. All right. Um, we have one public hearing, and this is a public hearing to hear all interested persons uh, well, scheduled for 205, and 205 having arrived, we're going to open the public hearing to uh, hear all interested persons who consider the town of Riverhead expenditure of a community preservation fund in the amount of $50,000 for improvement and maintenance of the Hamlet Park on the property described as well. It's the corner of uh, Sound Avenue and uh, Park Road, uh, right by Reeves Park. And uh, this is in conjunction with the acquisition from the County of Suffolk. Uh, I don't know if Jim, you want to say anything about it as a liaison or just have the public? But it is a public hearing. Uh, we can discuss it over the space. We're working on Jerry Park Park before the town. This is right in line with our report. Okay. And there is there is a depiction of what they proposed up on the easel uh, as far as the uh, improvements to the area, which is on the northeast corner of Sound Avenue and uh, Park Road. Uh, and the idea is to uh, put these improvements in. Uh, they're uh, not going to require extensive maintenance, uh, these limited mowing and annual plantings, which is indicated in the resolution for a period of five years cost not to exceed fifty thousand dollars total in for the five years that includes the planting, the uh, the improvements being made to the location, uh, the limit mowing and the annual practice. And uh, I would think there's a couple of people that have, uh, want to say one or two words about this. So Lana. <coughs> How you doing, sir? Uh, yeah. We know who you are, but just thank you. Bob Kelly, uh, Town of Riverhead, East Park. Um, just real quick on this, it's good to see that this is moving along. Um, have full support from the town and from our community, as you well know. Um, in regards to, to the amount of money that, that may come up, we can just clear the air that we're not looking for the town to spend any money, per se, to go into their pockets. This is strictly like the gentleman said about maintenance. We already have a lot of folks that are willing to donate their money and their time as far as purchasing anything that would be needed for the memorial park in the way of benches, moving a memorial stone. And we're not looking for a large project here. Um, we have the resources that are available. Again, uh, through like things like my brother's golf outing, I know the private citizens are willing to make a, a contribution to see this thing come to the light of day. Again, it would be a, a very small park, Memorial Park, you're marked again for the 9 11 victims. With, with a note to the folks that were never recovered that day, there's all, I think there's about 1,100 folks that still have no remains that have ever been found that day. And also for all the people that are getting ill and are unfortunately passing away as a result of the recovery efforts found there. And uh, you know how I feel about it. And you could pick a, a nicer place to have a small memorial for that. So thanks again, and hopefully we can. Get this thing going. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to be heard? Okay. Um, I'm going to close this out, and there is a resolution set up. There is not. Okay. Thank you. We'll close it out. I don't know if we need to keep this open for written comments until uh, March 16th. We have it all done, so if you go for written comments from March 16th at uh, 4 30 in the town clerk's office. And now we're going on to resolutions. Would anybody like to be heard on, on any of the resolutions? So, let me do so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I doubt it, but thank you. Good question. 194. Uh, it shows a total cost of $5,500 for Plant 15, but there's no mention of monthly ongoing costs to make payment. 194. <coughs> uh, we had uh, Gary Fenson, and he could address that. Want to let him come up and address that one? That's for the installation of cable into uh, Plant 15 for the communications and telemetry. Uh, there's only a one-time fee. So there is a monthly fee for the signals and the telemetry to run to all our other facilities. It's a control uh, line, not television. What do we pay for the monthly fee? I think it goes to 19, I think it's 11, 11 change. 11,000 a year? No, no, no. no. <laughs> 
It says uh, 3750, but we're only transferring 750. No, it's there. Just didn't line up. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, over on, the it's over on the left hand oh, okay. side. Oh, I see. It's okay. the third or second one. All right. Yes. Yes. Walter. Yes. Resolution adopted. Resolution 201. Walter Eisenhower, Supervisor, Town Attorney, to recover unclaimed funds from the New York State. Purchase number 1132410. So. Yes. Walter. Yes. Resolution adopted. Resolution 204. Motion to pay bills. 
And seconded? Yes. 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 Okay, uh, now we open the public meeting up to uh, anybody, public comment on anybody that, uh, any issue that's before the town. So we'd like to break before the town. We ask you to limit your comments to five minutes. Of course, that is, uh, assuming the board doesn't interrupt, it, uh, it's only if we like to say. We talk over here and do various things that we do have a tendency to do. Just after. Um, good afternoon, my name is Richard Amber. Um, I live at 97 Lakeside Trail in Ridge, and I do want to uh, throw that going in. Uh, I am not a Riverhead resident, um, but I don't think that much matters with respect to my concern about uh, redevelopment in Wading River. Um, uh, I'm about 500 yards from Riverhead, Brooklyn, in the line. I've discovered that um, the water that drops on the line doesn't know whether it dropped in Riverhead and Brookhead, but in the traffic that we encounter from the point of time work is the same on one side of the alley. Other fact, I know that uh, this town board actually has influence of events far beyond the own boundaries. So I want to talk a little bit about the waiting river thing I have. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about the kind of open? Sure. Does it get polluted from all those cesspools around it? Um, in the law that it's so clean. Um, Miraculously, it doesn't, and it makes it much more difficult for us to explain the problems with cesspools. Um, what has happened is that they, um, the, the water is checked weekly by the um, by the Civic Association. The lake is owned by the Civic Association and not by the town or by the uh, community. Um, and so we pay to have water testing and we do dye testing of cesspool. They put them all in on the inside perimeter, that is between the lake and the houses, which nobody would begin to do uh, at this point. Right. Um, but increasingly people then, when they switch, first of all, they're, when the community is now on Southern County Water Authority and now this is going to go in. I could talk about the water story. Um, uh, but in any case, the, the point is, people are moving their cesspools there because there's no conflict with the water supply. They used to have wells in the front yard. And, so, and um, it is remarkable. In the spring, um, it is nearly pristine. It is uh, unmeasurable parts of nitrogen. And even in the hottest summer months, it's entirely sustainable. They don't allow power boats on the lake. They discourage fertilizers. They specifically tap people on the shoulders that uh, are walking their dogs on the perimeter of the lake. Um, they've been very, very tentative about this long before I was there. I've been there for about 40 years. Make a nice water skate. Well, but I think that you're making one of the <laughs> Anyway, no, I'm just in all that. Yeah, we'll, use the, that, so we'll okay. use the cables, that's good. Actually, the nitrates affect the drinking water, not surface water. Um, actually, the surface water is a manifestation, uh, I mean, the, the, the lake is a surface water, it's a manifestation of a water table, which is surface water, and also imp uh, impacts drinking water. So when we're dealing with, by the way, just because it's all going to come up and, and be very important in this coming year, um, the Southern County Water Authority's reports on water quality suggest that surface water is really suffering, and that's impacting not just drinking water, but surface water. So they're saying surface water is suffering from... From from the sun, really, yeah. because I thought it would be about that is that the state standard for drinking water is 10 parts of nitrogen per liter, and to make any surface water body survive on Long Island, it has to be fewer than three parts. So it's actually both the surface water is more sensitive uh, than drinking water in terms of pressure. What is the nitrogen loading in the summer from? Uh, I mean, I'm just curious. It's so clean in the in the lake in the summer, do you know? It, it gets as high as two parts. That's it? Yeah. So you could drink that water with a spread of filter from yep. the plastic. Now, do they, have, do they have road runoff going into that lake or no? Um, no, well, we think that it's pretty well captured. They built special um, uh, catch basins with filters the town of Brookhaven has uh, on the, uh, the single road that is the perimeter of the lake. The and that's, a, that's, supposed to, that's supposed to control it. Um, we think that some storm water must be getting to the lake because after two or three days of heavy, in the way that sometimes BBC has to close shell fish areas and so forth, the, the percentage of coliform is higher after that kind of incident. So it's getting, it's rolling off lawns and it's rolling off other surfaces, but not so much road runoff as other surface runoff. Thank you. Thanks for this. Little primer on, uh, on that kind of 
Our reason for coming here is that um, I wanted you all to know that I'm working independently um, on the issues involving uh, proposed developments now and in the future <coughs> at, uh, along Route 25A in, uh, <coughs> in Wigan River, um, particularly because I think the BFJ study uh, was flawed. Um, I was very much part of the BFJ study in Brookhaven Town, and um, I think they got a, a, a better work product. I, I don't know exactly why. Um, and in addition, I think the community plan that has been sent to you doesn't go far enough. And I think that the object of the game is to try to, I think, balance um, the rights of the developers and the needs of the community. Um, we had a brief discussion about this at your work session, and you focused parcel by parcel on the parcels that were to be developed. I think we should be taking a broader subject, and I'll come back to that in just a second. Um, but I very much would like to work with the uh, town board. I've sent you all some additional documentation in terms of where we might go, and I'm going to advance in just a minute or so. Um, what I think we can do to actually produce a satisfactory result. Right now, I don't see the, the developers or the uh, environmentalists entirely satisfied with where we are, so that means we just have a little bit greater distance to go. Um, the plan that I think will work would be one that starts with, why did we do this in the first place? What are the concerns? Um, the latest plan from BFJ actually increases the amount of commercial development over the previous versions. Um, I mentioned to you at work session, um, we have that so, Rick. Look, pay, I don't know, so you're not paying attention. But listen to what he's saying, because I don't understand how this could be so. I'm listening. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, well, in any case, the initial complaint, uh, concern was that there were some 200,000 square feet. Now it's somewhere between 210 and 230,000 square feet um, of commercial. Um, how it went up, and, and the details of the, the zoning they're recommend, uh, recommending is, is way too much for a brief presentation here, but we can come to that. The other concern is that the, um, the economic study that was made in connection with the BFJ plan in, on the Brookhaven side looked at all of Wading River, not just half, not just the portion that was in Brookhaven, and concluded that um, the, the hamlet could not absorb more than about 23,000 square feet of additional retail and probably no restaurants and certain other things at all. Uh, and the proposal, as it is currently in front of you, calls for 123,000 square feet, almost five times what it is that the, the community can absorb. So we worry not just that the new development might adversely impact existing businesses, but we might find that the various and the sundry proposals are competing with one another. And so we think that can you have I a question. question. When the BFJ study was done in the Brookhaven side, they based it on the zoning as it exists before we adopt any plan, is that correct? Correct. So they took into consideration the commercial zoning that was in Wading River already and recommended that minimal should be placed on the Brookhaven side because of all the commercial development that was proposed in Wading River, correct? No, I would make just one distinction. You're close. It's that they looked at well, the whole 11792, the whole of Wading River, determined that the whole of Wading River could only obtain, uh, could only absorb 23,000 square feet, not the, just the portion on the Brookhaven side. Court. They were looking at all of Wading River. And by the way, I think we should. I think the, the BFJ study might better have looked at more, but you guys were looking at a limited one and a half mile stretch, and I understand your scope is very different from the scope that Brookhaven undertook, but we really do need to be looking at Wading River as a whole. Uh, Hamlet, even though the line goes in the middle. These political boundaries really don't work in terms of how stuff functions, that's all. Yeah, you know, we try to help Wake River out by doing a study, and we pay for the study to be done, and now the study is in, and now we don't like the study. <laughs> and and it's, a, it's a third party. It wasn't the town doing it. It wasn't Wake River residents doing it. It was a third party doing it. And this is what they came back and recommended, and now Wake River doesn't like what they recommended. I just don't know how to see where we're going, and I think we have to sit down and talk with you to see where we're going. Sure. Of course, there has to be uh, equalization between uh, preservation and commercial use. Okay, and let me I agree with that. Let me, let me respond to that. I think okay. there should be a balance between preservation and commercial use. Yeah. I don't see any preservation proposed in this study at all. Um, the only preservation that was suggested has been rejected, and that is the entire. No, no, I just said it has to be a balance. But the answer is, but the answer is, 
that yes, the community is not uh, very happy about the proposal, and it turns out that neither are the developers. They're complaining, they're uh, turning to myself briefly just a few minutes ago, they're saying that there might be litigation unless the plan were changed. The plan isn't in place. It's still in flux. We're all working on it together. Why don't we find a, we, we ought to try to find an accommodation. Everybody realizes that this land is going to be developed, that the owners of that property have the right to develop it, but could there be a mix of retail? and maybe some professional, and maybe some residential, and maybe some community uses. If the balance occurred, we wouldn't find the commercial, especially the retail issues, from, uh, uh, interest competing with one another, and I think you wouldn't have the same anxiety from the community that we're going to see. Uh, the, we don't want 25 to look very much like 25 does um, from West no, that's what I'm saying. That's so I, I don't think we're all, I mean, that, we're, we're, that our views or our vision of it are all that different. I just mm -hmm. think we haven't reconciled it yet. And so my reason for coming here is that um, the supervisor has been advocating that we move this along quickly. And, uh, and I think that's very commendable. This may be the first time in my life that I've ever suggested that government slow down. But because the BFJ plan is not <laughs> adequate and because I'm not sure it all got worked out at the work session, I think we should take a little bit of uh, uh, time, um, and I'll tell you why. Um, as elected officials here, you have to deal with issues large and small. You've got, are we going to do the Blues Festival? Uh, are we doing the animal shelter properly? All of those things, none of them are important. But I have been working at this for about 25 years, and I've seen develop move from west to east, and I've seen a lot of towns not plan it properly. It isn't a question of too much. It's where it belongs and how much of what type and so forth. We don't have a good record. A lot of the western towns have simply processed applications and not really plans. Somebody came and said, I want to build this, and they said, go ahead. Instead of saying, no, that belongs over here, or we want our residential over here. It's a planning challenge, and I think we should all be engaged in that. Uh, but the future of Wading River, I think, is its fate, what it's like, how it works. And I think it's not just Wading River. It's happening in Wading River first because it's furthest west, but it's going to happen in Calverton, and it's going to happen in Northville, and it's going to happen in Jamesport and, and beyond. Uh, you're working even today to try to restore the downtown because planning didn't get that, sort that out all right when we did 58. Maybe we, buy, we build a bypass and there are a whole bunch of dynamics. It's not as simple as, as any one thing. But the point is, we, we want to solve it in Wading River, not just because of Wading River, but because the same pressures are going to exist all over this. Your next in line from Juggernaut that started in Huntington and has worked its way well into Brookhaven. So what I'm suggesting is that I'm asking you perhaps, and I don't see it on the agenda, and I even, when I didn't see it, ran the risk of saying maybe I should bring it up, but there was the suggestion that you might want to convene or schedule a public hearing on this sooner rather than later, and my suggestion is let's hold off just a bit because the public hearing would be on a particular plan, and if no one really likes the BFJ plan, we've even had people already threatening that there might be litigation if, we had, if you guys adopted it. You guys yourselves on... Uh, at the work session said, there's some of the stuff that we're recommending that we are not going to go along with. I'm trying to figure out how to reconcile their recommendations with your judgment. And, and by the way, uh, Mr. Dunleavy, it, it is a shame when government invests in a study and you've got professionals doing this and they come back with something that's not satisfactory. They don't have the answers all the time. You don't have the answers or I don't have their answers all the time. But if we all sat down together, we've got some planners in a room, and we got the, the lawyers, and nobody were trying to deny anybody their private property rights, just to try to sort out why it was you did the study, why it is you thought that it was worth looking at land use on that particular hamlet because you didn't want to see it be something you didn't mean for it to be. I think that would be a useful exercise. I'd love to chat you up about it. I sent you a letter and made some suggestions. You'll come back, and I think that you will think as little of my plan as I think of BFJ's. But the fact of the matter is we should all be talking about it because between and among us, I think there's a real opportunity. This is one we want to get right. I mentioned the other functions that you take, but the future of the hamlets in this town may be the most important things, the things of which you take the greatest pride or the greatest regret when you're done your political career here. I think we have a tremendous opportunity to get this right, and I would very, very much like in the, the weeks ahead to sit down and figure out amongst people, it could be uh, Rick and other planners that we respect, the planners that the community is using, somebody that the developers say we respect, especially the economic analysis. I just don't, 
I'm not an economist, but I don't see how the community can absorb that kind of density to anybody's economic benefit. It's real, real hard to make a living in this kind of economy, and to make it more complicated by everybody doing the same thing in a very small area. Uh, you mentioned the traffic uh, problem. Uh, west of Wading River Road during the, the work session. So you're beginning to see some of the things that are potential problems. And I, rather than to have litigation by either side, it just seems to me that we ought to, the, the town tends to, when the town rush, uh, rushes things, it tends to make mistakes, and the mistakes produce lawsuits, and the lawsuits produce rulings that you don't like. Let's except, take a minute. Except for the exception of this town board, which y'all? <laughs> so then we will not give you the BFJ award for planning. But I also think, I also think the property owners should be involved. Absolutely. Did you see a ruling that uh, the Western Town got they owe millions of dollars? They have to pay the uh, the property owner because they downzoned his property and, 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 and he lost money on his property. So these are things we have to look at. So I think the property owners should be included. So they know where we come from, and maybe make stop some litigation. Councilman Don I absolutely agree with you. I would make one correction that we all should understand, and that I have heard uh, uh, misinformation from in the media, which I have my own distrust for. And that is that there is nothing that prohibits a municipality under state zoning law to upzone or downzone property unless. But there has to be a rational basis for it. So you could reduce the density and the return on investment of a developer who brought property, bought property under previous zoning, and you would be perfectly permitted to do it if you could provide a rational basis for it. This is not the, an investment in real estate is not the only investment that there are risks associated with. The government's not responsible for an investment that didn't anticipate a zoning change any more than the price of gold or the price of stocks or anything else. But the answer is. We're not going to produce a result that's satisfactory to you, the developers who own that land, and there's no dispute about it, are going to develop it. They're, it's not a question of whether their property rights are not in jeopardy. They're going to develop the land. Whether we can have them do that in ways that is actually more profitable to them and better suited to the community or not is a challenge we ought to take on. I, I think we're up to it. All right. Well, thank you. Let's do this. We will, because uh, the board has Made final decisions, but not vote on. We officially vote on them. Thursday is not this Thursday's work session. It's not good. We'll put it on for March 15th. And if you want to come in, then bar NPC. I don't see anybody bar NPC here. Wants to come in? The property owners want to come in. I think because I'm here, they they are not. I don't know whether that's true or not. But the point is, what we ought to do is, and let's talk between. Now and then, and anybody who has a suggestion who of who needs to be there, this really ought to be open, and people ought to be really looking for solutions. We'll do it on the 20th. You're not going to be there on the 15th? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
pertaining to the Zumas property, where the back portion was going to be preserved as open space, and now it's going to be developed based on the recommendations from the FJ. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to resist your urge to look at the individual projects one by one and rather try to take the big picture of how this all fits together. The BFJ study actually contradicts that was supplied to you actually in some measures contradicts what they made with the recommendation they made just across that line. I'm not pointing fingers. I don't know why they did it. I haven't had a chance to talk to Frank about it. But the fact of the matter, BFJ is welcome to come in and sit down with us and say, this is why we think this is a better way. You will only be the more knowledgeable and make a better yeah, decision. We might have to pay them because I know they have a certain number of meetings. But I, Dick, if you could do me a favor and speak to Rick about that mathematical calculation, because it doesn't sure. seem to be to make sense. And then the other thing is what I'd like is specific, the way I understand maybe it wasn't uh, great to go parcel by parcel, but I would, you know, I would want to specific input on specific things for specific areas. If you don't want to go parcel by parcel, at least this we're going to have to go parcel by parcel. I just would want to start with a big picture look at what do we got here, what worked 10 years ago, what motivated us to decide there was a risk that we might be doing something that the community couldn't tolerate uh, economically or in terms of quality of life. Let's look at the big picture and see if you can sort. If there's a difference, if you guys get to make the choice at the end of the day. Anyway, the better information you have, the better the decision. Well, I, I think uh, uh, the company BMJ did what Wake River residents wanted at that uh, the meetings they had with them, especially on the fourth. Uh, I was absolutely and thrilled and by the public. Is what, this is the information they received from the residents, and I think that's what they followed. Uh, they certainly didn't. I know Jody made some recommendations, and they didn't follow anything Jody did. Okay, so maybe they weren't all wrong. They didn't follow the recommendations <laughs> of the uh, That's it. They did. They ignored my recommendations. <laughs> Well, well, you're, you're and I, and I, and I, Council of are in good company because, in fact, the community doesn't feel as though they were heard, and they can't find the things in that study that were reflected in that, I thought, great turnout uh, and great public support. The answer is, so we don't have all the answers now, but we're not making a precipitous decision now either. What we're going to try to do is figure out where BFJ was right, where the community was right, and maybe even where Councilwoman a gig we hope is right. So <laughs> and I'm gonna walk with it. I'm gonna walk with it. Maybe that was the reason why they ignored her. Because they you know, yeah, that's a big thing. Uh, I think if you could just tell me good show I I you know, I gave that to the board that you gave to me and I don't actually know where my original copy wound up, so I will take a look at that on the behind again as we go love our reading. But maybe if you give that to Rick and just go You're at a disadvantage out of having it in front of you because then you could look at it and tell me why my ideas are not so good either. So I will take it. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Steve from Mount Riverhead. I wasn't going to speak, and I'm not as articulate as Mr. Amper, but I'm still confused. It seems to me, as a resident of Riverhead up for seven years now, that you guys uh, studied this area. Forever. I could be wrong. But I still go back to the point, and I'll, and I can cover this to Don Levy, and Mr. Ramper may know more about the legality, but in News Day today, there was an article about developer in Brookhaven where he, fought, he bought his property under the master zoning, the service zoning, and then it was down zone. Uh, yes, they're going to go to appeals because the article, and I understand that government has undue funds to continue to challenge it in court after court. But I have a feeling it sounds like the bill is going to win. Yes. And as a resident of Riverhead and the tax that, that, that was the uh, Court of Appeals who, who decided that. Okay. They went to the Court of Appeals, okay. and they're the ones who decided the next step is Supreme Court. Okay, so there was in, one in, more in, step in, right. in, in New York State. And if they so lose. Town of Brookhaven tax base could be open to a million dollars or so. Yeah, and and the the have to come up with. Over a I hate to see the same thing happen in Riverhead because I'm still going back. And again, I'm not a lawyer, but I know a little bit about the Constitution. And if you buy property under a zoning that was done 10 years ago under your master zoning, and now people want to change it because they're not happy, I understand their frustration, believe me. Again, I lived in Rocky Point, and when I was there in 67, there was nothing. And as Ms. Mayor said, the West End got overbuilt, but people have rights. They buy property, 
to me, I think the biggest key players you'd have to bring in is the developers themselves. And say, Listen, developers, this is what the community wants. Is there any way that we, you can build something affordable? But if not, I think you're going to get sued, and I think you're going to get lo lose it. And again, it sounds like it's been studied forever and ever, and then when you finally get a report, there's still problems with the report. So it's frustrating for everybody, but it's just frustrating to look in. I have no horse in the race. I'm not a builder. I'm not a developer. But somehow it just seems unfair to the developers. Again, you know, that they have a right to build something, and all of a sudden you pull a rope from out from underneath them and say, no, because you know what? There's going to be traffic. Boo hoo. Yeah. We live on Long Island. Yeah, there's traffic. And so, you know, maybe I, my common sense is just. Uh, uh, see, that's what it is common sense. You have to do things with common sense. <coughs> you have to look at past practices. So for any zoning that we were sued, we lost. So that's uh, 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 What would you say? Ninety percent? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, name one we won. Yeah, name one that we won. That's right. Wait, Miss Freeman, I want to know what the, what what, what, what did this thing in you say that I didn't read today? Well, well you didn't read also. You didn't read about the ambulance. I heard about the ambulance. I mean, we we won that one. We won the new press release. Press release. You know, caught us in press release. and I have been talking about that for years. Yeah, for years we were talking about it. Let's. Let's focus on this. Who was the developer? Where was the property? Uh, Pop, 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 Morgan, I forget his name, but I, I think it was somewhere on 25 Bay. I, I just, I said, look at this. I was reading the article. Yeah, I can't there. remember what the, it was. It's in today's news. The developer wanted to develop something in the down zone, and he lost his property was devalued. Right. And he sued, and then he lost the first two in, in, in our courts here. They went to the appellate division, and the appellate division overturned them. And, 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 and said that, that he was right, and they awarded him over $800,000 with penalties and interest. It could be millions of dollars. That's, that's not the same. Yeah. Well, that's statewide. Any, any, any sort of rezoning through planning steps has to be justified. It just can't be willy nilly because somebody doesn't want it. But if there can be a rationale as to why it's being done, whether it's what is, planning, so that, you know, well, would I be wrong saying that the study that this company just did, didn't show any real well, rationale. Yeah. So, so people, yeah. that's what Mr. Amp is talking about, that you know, well, we just got it. finding we're little things in that that's study. That's what they want to work with the study they did, but they're not going to take it to gospel if that's the end of it. And one other question is on common sense. I, I saw a work session in regards to um, a windmill for the sewer plant. And I don't know if the board made any sort of decision, but I was looking at that thing too. And I know alternative energy is a great plan, but it just didn't seem cost effective. It didn't seem like the hedge the town should be looking for. Again, I don't know if you guys made a decision. We did make a decision. You're not doing it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the conversation. Yeah. Have a good day. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I bought property out here in Dayport. And I was going to build on 75,000 square feet. And I lost in court when I took them in court. And I appealed it and I lost it. I'm talking about like $150,000 worth of money. You've got to take the beat, you get about it, whatever the town does, that's it. Because, like I said, I've been there. I've been there. I bought the property. I lost it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All in favor, aye. Thank you for coming, everybody.